Back in 1960s Glasgow, there wasn't much beauty or much good living standards. There weren't really any functioning toilets, buildings weren't always safe, flats were half destroyed and unemployment was high. No public funding really went to Glasgow as it does today and the police presence was mostly low. Violence and prostitution was high in the area, as was poverty. People who were fortunate enough to work and receive their pay packet every Friday usually spent it dancing at a dance hall. The main one being at the Barrowland Ballroom. One young lady decided on her Friday night to go to the Barrowland Ballroom. Little did she know, she'd be the first of three to suffer a grisly fate. On the 23rd of February 1968, the naked body of 25-year-old nurse Patricia Docker was found in the doorway of a lock-up garage by a man on his way to work in Batterfield, Glasgow. The whereabouts of her body was only yards from her home in Langside Place. Her body showed evidence of extensive blunt force trauma, particularly to the face and head. Police suspected she was strangled with a belt, and her handbag, watch and clothes were missing from the crime scene. Her clothing was never found. However, her handbag was later found in the river cart by an underwater search unit, with her watch also being found from a pool of water close to the scene of the crime. The only real lead at the time was that of neighbours hearing the scream of a woman which exclaimed, leave me alone. The crime scene itself had very little evidence, and her father identified her body the following day. The night of her murder, she told her parents she would spend the night dancing at the majestic ballroom in Hope Street but instead they thought she chose to go to the Barrowland Ballroom, as previously mentioned. This is most likely due to the over 25 night hosted every Thursday. She was thought to be staying around a friend's house, but this was not the case. Police determined that Docker did in fact go to the Majestic Ballroom, only to transition to the Barrowland, where she most likely encountered her killer. Her cause of death was determined as strangulation, and her body had zero evidence of sexual assault. They believe she died very shortly after leaving the Barrowland Ballroom. But investigators said it was likely that the perpetrator punched and kicked her in the face and was originally thought to have raped her before strangling her to death and left her naked body with nothing but one shoe nearby. No further leads or evidence would come from this. Saturday the 16th of August 1969, 32-year-old mother of three, Jemima MacDonald, went to the Barrowland Ballroom to spend her night dancing. She was a regular attendee of the Barrowland and had always requested her sister, Margaret O'Brien, look after her three children when she was not there. As it neared midnight, MacDonald was seen by several people in the company of a young, presentable and well-spoken man of slim build aged between 25 and 35. Witnesses claim he was between 6 foot and 6 foot 2 in height. The man had short, dark brown hair with fair streaks. Witnesses also claim he spoke with a distinctive Glaswegian accent. For those who are unaware, Glaswegian is the name given to an accent from Glasgow, typically a strong Scottish accent. One important factor to note is that the man often quoted the Bible in his conversation. This would help go on to create the name Bible John for the killer. Jemima was last seen leaving the Barrowland just after midnight on the 17th of August 1969 in the company of this man. She was last seen walking towards either Main Street or Landressi Street in the direction of her home at approximately 12.40am. O'Brien became concerned when her sister failed to return home. Later that same day, she began hearing rumours that young children had discovered a body within a building on McKeith Street. With no police following up on the reports and rumours, O'Brien decided on the Monday morning afterward that she would visit to see for herself. She discovered her own sister's extensively battered body lying face down, with her shoes and stockings lying beside her shortly afterwards. Like Patricia Docker, Jemima had been raped and beaten badly to her facial area, before being strangled to death with one of her own stockings. Her murder happened over a day before she was found on the Monday, so also like Docker, she had been killed shortly after leaving the Barrowland Ballroom. But unlike Docker, Jemima MacDonald was fully clothed, 
although her underclothing was torn. Another similarity to Docker's murder was found. They were both menstruating at the time of their death. Police instantly went door to door asking for information and received reports of the likeness of the killer. People around the area also heard screams, but thought nothing of it. After comparing the details of the crimes, police realised they had a serial killer in the making on their radar. face of Bible John. Police hunting Bible John, the man wanted in connection with three mothers, issued this remarkable picture yesterday. People saw Caught Bible John and caught everywhere. He was Bible John, it said. And women would be looking everywhere at brothers, at uncles, at old boyfriends, thinking, could that be Bible John? My mother, I mean, she grew up in the Gallagher and she went to the Barrowland and she describes to this day the eyes of that man and what he meant and how we feared him. I appeal to everyone, if you think you know this man, contact your nearest police station immediately. Bible John here is his hair as it was seen that night. Uh, if he changed his style slightly in keeping with modern trend, would be to grow his hair a bit longer, maybe on the uh, Georgie Best idea. Up and down the city streets, in and out of the Eagle, the Nags Head, the buses, the blue trains, the ballrooms, always showing the picture. Oh, yes. I, I think that the photo fit was almost too good because it produced hundreds, literally hundreds, of wrong leads and took up an awful lot of police time. As notifications continue to come in by telephone from other parts of the country, <coughs> detectives on the murder squad have already covered about 50,000 miles in Glasgow and the surrounding area. And, of course, the docks, to check out the crews of the ships that were berthed there at the time of the murder. The scope of the inquiry is enormous. People were imagining this killer. It's hard to over-describe, really, the, the native fear that that can engender, especially in a particular area where the murders have been happening. And the city went into a kind of fearful lockdown. The quest impinges on the life of ordinary people nearly everywhere. A man on a taxi journey to Edinburgh innocently quotes the Bible to the driver and finds himself deposited at police headquarters as a suspect. Another man, tired of being teased for looking like Bible John, assaults his wife. That's how deep the fear and the paranoia went. Day in, day out, something new. Faces in the busy streets being studied closely. Envy, who looks a wee bit like that picture, was getting fired in, you know, and we were going and interviewing him, seeing him, talking to him, bringing him in. In talking to approximately 40,000 people so far, the police have been given the names of men who resemble the description of Bible John. And some of these men have been picked up more than once. BT came in and he's, you know, complimenting, you know, you're a rare likeness, you know, calls everybody son sort of style, you know. It didn't cheer you up though. No, not at the time it didn't. I mean, I can talk about it now, but at the time I was getting worked up.
When our cameraman was in the neighborhood, he looked in at the Barrowland Dance Hall and filmed the Jitterbug Contest. On the 31st of October 1969, a man walking his dog discovered the body of 29-year-old Helen Puttock behind a tenement in the Scotston district of Glasgow. Her body was found beside a drain pipe in the back garden of her Earl Street flat. She had been stripped, partially naked, extensively beaten about the face before being raped, then strangled to death with one of her own stockings, just like Jemima MacDonald. The contents of her handbag were scattered close to her body, although her handbag was missing just like the previous murders. Grass stains on Puttock's feet and shoes indicated that she struggled with her killer. It was clear to police that she tried to escape her attacker but had failed. A deep bite mark was found on her upper right thigh, as did the previous victims. Also like the previous victims, Puttock was menstruating at the time of her murder. Her murderer placed a sanitary towel under her left arm. The evening before her murder, Puttock and her sister, Jean Langford, went to the Barrowland Ballroom where both became friendly with two men. Both were named John. One of them claimed to work as a slater and resided in Castle Milk, whilst the other, who was a well-spoken man, did not disclose any information about himself. After being in a group of four for over an hour, the John from Castle Milk went aboard a bus home, whilst the two sisters and the other John hired a taxi. The three of them head towards Jean's home in Knightswood. There, Jean left the taxi, which continued toward Puttock's home in Scotston. During this journey, John had claimed to be a teetotal individual who quoted the Old Testament often. He would cite Moses and call the Barrowland an adulterous den of iniquity. He was disapproving of married women visiting the premises. When Jean left the taxi, it was the last time she saw her sister alive. Jean would describe John as a tall, slim and well-dressed young man with reddish or fair hair which was neat towards the back. She placed his age between 25 and 30 years old and said he was around 5 foot 10 inches tall. She claimed he used one of three names, John Templeton, John Sempleson or John Emerson. He had been polite and well spoken. Many potential suspects came and went over the years. A John White, a man from the Netherlands, the rapist of Hannah Martin, John Irvin McInnes, and most notably Peter Tobin, a Scottish serial killer. However, all have been discredited and are not part of the active investigation against Bible John. I had never heard of this case, and I am a citizen of the UK. They see him as Scotland's Jack the Ripper, so I want to thank SOG for introducing me to this case and I've learnt a lot. I hope this video is informative and I appreciate your time. So the real question is, who is and who was Bible John? Was it one person? Detectives seem to think that the chance of finding him is very slim, but with all the DNA nowadays and family tree DNA, we might find him. But he could be dead by now. This was a crime from the 1960s, the late 1960s at that. He was 25 to 35 years old, so the chances of him being alive are very, very unlikely. I hope one day the families can find closure, but for now, this case remains unsolved. Rest in peace to all the victims, and thank you for watching.